PR work perfectly. And now Israel can launch that spectacular military attack. The Israeli people are calling on the government, come on, come on, what are you waiting on? Let's wage war. In the Israeli cabinet they are calling for it. Hmm? And the government is giving the impression to the world that we are restraining ourselves. We are restraining ourselves. How long will it be before that takes place? I don't think one. A spectacular military display is coming soon. It is my impression that when that happens, it will be the most appropriate time to bring down the international monetary system, which is already fraudulent and already vulnerable. And therefore, that will be a time when the jar will move from a day which is a month to a day which is like a week. Israel now emerges as the ruling power in the world. The impression is created that this is the return of the golden age. It is only at that time that the Dajjal will now appear in a day which is like our day. I assume that he will be the ruler of Israel. And so from Jerusalem he rules the world. And so he has accomplished his mission. And the golden age has come back. But Banu Israel will not be able to recognize that they were deceived. It is after this that Imam al-Mahdi emerges. I have this lecture maybe tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Huh? Thursday? Tuesday. Imam al-Mahdi and the return of the Khilafah. This is the lecture on Tuesday. It is at this time that Imam al-Mahdi is going to emerge. But Imam al-Mahdi will not emerge. until the water in the Sea of Galilee is dry. When Imam al-Mahdi emerges, it is that time that Isa al-Islam will return and he will kill Dajjal. But Isa al-Islam cannot return until the water in the Sea of Galilee is dry. How low is the water? Is it drying up? I read the Jerusalem Post every day on the internet in order to monitor the water level in the Sea of Galilee. It is now so low, as never before in history, so low, that Israel itself has declared, that is the water engineers, that they expect sometime this summer that the water level will be so low that the Sea of Galilee can never be restored. It's going to die now. How much time will it take before that water dries up? That's the amount of time that's left. How much water will evaporate from the sun? That's the amount of time that's left. I have concluded it's not going to take a hundred years. Oh no. I have concluded it is going to take less than 50 years before that water dries up. And when that water dries up, which is less than 50 years I believe, the world will then witness the emergence of Imam al-Mahdi. And when he emerges then Isa alayhi salam returns, the true Messiah. When he returns, he will kill the Dajjal. And Gog and Magog are going to be destroyed. And then said the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, then the Holy Land will be liberated. He said, when this hadith is in Sahih, in this Sunan of Tirmizi, he said, when you see the black flags coming from the direction of Khorasan, Go and join that army, even if you have to eh? crawl over ice. 
Go and join that army even if you have to leave Singapore. Go and join that army. Because Allah's Khalifa, Imam al-Mahdi, is in that army. And no one will be able to stop that army until it reaches Jerusalem. And so now, we don't have time to debate this subject with those who differ with us. We don't have time for them anymore. <laughs> they can defer with us. They can disbelieve all of this. It doesn't bother us. Because we know the countdown has begun. We know it's just a little bit more time. When a Muslim army will destroy the state of Israel, the Holy Land will then be liberated. The true followers of Ibrahim alayhi salam will then take control of the Holy Land. The state of Israel of Suleiman alayhi salam will be restored by Isa alayhi salam. And the Prophet said, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he said that Jesus will rule as a just hakim adil, a just ruler from Jerusalem. And so the prophecy will be fulfilled. And the golden age will be restored. But it is the followers of Muhammad والسلام, which would have inherited the legacy of Sulaiman alayhi salam. It is now twenty past ten and I finished the first part of the lecture. <laughs> that is, I have finished that part of the lecture which pertains to Dajjal in his capacity of Al-Masih. If we had the time to go to the second part, which we don't, we would now proceed to the methodology. How does Dajjal achieve his objectives? What is his methodology? Hmm? Uh, the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, every messenger of Allah has warned his people about the Dajjal. But I'm going to tell you something that no one has ever said before me. So this is very important. The Dajjal sees with one eye. His left eye. He's blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grape. How could this be so important? A one-eyed man that no prophet of Allah ever spoke about it. That this had to be saved until the very last prophet. What is there so important about a one-eyed man? There was a one-eyed man in 1967 who was a very, a very good general. Huh? Moshe Dayan. There was a one-eyed man who led the British fleet to defeat the French at Trafalgar. Lord Nelson. Huh? So one-eyed men could do great things. So what is there so significant about the Dajjal's one eye? Hmm? Maybe it is not to be understood literally. Huh? Let's see. Let's see. The Dajjal has the word kafir written between his eyes on his forehead, kafir. And every mu'min will be able to read it. Oh? So, what about those who are not mu'min? Don't they have eyes too? How come they can't read? And this one can read. Maybe he's not reading with these eyes, huh? Maybe. Let's see. Every mu'min will be able to read it, whether he is katib, can read and write, or ghayr katib. He cannot read and write, he'll still be able to read it. 